still small voice cries out to my soul. Hey everyone, it's MK. Welcome back to MK Quilts. So this morning I have a little treat for you. So the first treat is an announcement about Christy Dillon's new free 12 Days of Christmas set. So you're looking on the screen right now at an email that I got from Christy. Her site is mycreativestitches.net and in it it explains the new set that she's going to be releasing over the next few days. Now this recording is being made in the middle of December 2019. So to get this set you're going to want to hop on over to Christy's website from now through the end of the year. So the first thing is I get a lot of questions from people. How do you purchase designs? How do you download them? Where do you save them? And most importantly, how do you work with them from within QPI? That's the Quilt Pattern Indexer program that we released here from MK Quilts a couple of years ago. So I thought what I would do for you this morning is just let you watch me as I go ahead and get these free designs from Christy, how I download them, how I unzip them from my downloads directory, where I save them. Now where you save them may be a little bit different, but I want you to think about your saving plan. What is your plan for organizing, saving, and backing up your designs. Then I thought I would just go ahead and let you watch me keyword them and bring them into QPI in the manner that I do it. Okay, so first thing, let's head on over to Christy's website. And here we are, and you'll see that the first blocks listed here at the top of her site are these three blocks from her 12 Days of Christmas set. Now, She's going to be releasing these over the next few days. So for right now, these are the only ones that we can download. Okay, so all we did was add them to our cart one at a time, click on continue shopping, add the next one to the cart, and so on and so forth. All right, I have three items in my cart. All I'm going to do is go ahead and view my cart, proceed to checkout. Because this is a $0 purchase, there's really nothing to put in in the way of a credit card. I have an account on Christie's site. I would suggest that you go ahead and register on her site and then continue. And you'll see that there's no payment required for this order. It's $0 and just go ahead and place the order. Okay, it says that you'll receive an email about the purchase, but basically what you can do at this point, if you have an account with Christy, those, those patterns will now be populated in your account on her site. Okay, so I'm going over to my account. I'm going over to my order status. And here's the order that I just placed. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on this download files. Now look down here at the bottom of my screen. I have already done that step. So I clicked on download, it put block number one right here. I clicked on download there. There's block number two and I clicked there and there's block number three. Now what that did is put those files in a folder in my downloads directory on my computer's hard drive. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open up that file, that file folder. You're gonna see there's a folder that Christy named joyful block number one. I'm gonna go right up here. I'm gonna hit extract all. I'm gonna let my computer just default the the folder where it's going to download it, extract it right there. I'm not going to change anything and I'm just going to hit at extract. Now you saw that box right there because I had already done that, right? You wouldn't get that box. You would just do the extract. Okay, let's go to the next one. Here's block number two. Just go ahead, open that folder and hit extract all. I'm leaving the folder name just as it is hit extract, you won't get that box, 
and I'll just go through the extract again. It's not a problem that I've done it before. And here's the third one. Okay, so however many you're doing in one sitting, just open it up, extract all, and you're good to go. Okay, next step. Let's talk a little bit about how I work with file management. Okay, currently these extracts are sitting in my downloads directory. That's not where I want them ultimately to be located. I'm going to move them to an archive location that I have. Now my archive location is in a product called OneDrive. That is a cloud backup storage plan and that's what Paul and I use here for our personal files and for MK quilts. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my archives folder. Now here's where you need to divert and you need to have your plan. Where is your folder or folders or cloud backup drive that you're going to put your stuff in? Okay, I'm going to go over into my archives folder and I'm going to look for a folder that I have already created for Christie's designs. Here is a folder that I've already created for her. I'm going to open up the folder and I'm going to move I'm going to move the folders from my downloads directory into this folder. Okay, I'm just going to open up two windows at one time. Hopefully you can follow this. You can have two windows open in your file explorer at all times. So I'm going to open up the downloads directory because that's where the folders are currently sitting. And I'm going to put it right one on top of the other here with my Christie folder and my downloads directory. Okay, so one right on top of the other so that I can work with them at the same time. And I'm just making one a little bit smaller. Okay, here's my joyful block number one. There's my joyful block number two and number three. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make one folder in Christie's area of my cloud drive. I'm going to call it the joyful 12 days of Christmas set 2019. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because I don't want a folder for every single block that Christy releases. If that's how she does it, that's fine. That's her prerogative. She's the designer. On my computer, I don't want to end up with 12 blocks or 15 blocks or whatever she's releasing. I don't want a folder for every single block. I just want one folder. Okay, so here I am in the area of my folder where I'm saving it and I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call it Joyful 12 Days of Christmas 2019. Okay, now I have a folder that I can move all of the rest of these files into. Okay, so I'm going to open up that folder from my downloads directory and I'm going to go ahead and copy everything from this folder. I'm going to go ahead and hit copy. I'm going to come up here to the Joyful Days of Christmas, open that up, right click with my mouse, and hit paste. Now you'll see that Christy is one of those designers that gives us, what is this, about a dozen different file formats. And I have chosen to copy all of those file formats into the folder. Now when I go to use them with my Pro Stitcher, I don't need all of these formats, right? Okay, keep watching. In a minute when we're done doing all of this copying, we're going to take just the file format that we need, make a copy of that in another location so that we can use it with our simulators and with our QPI. Okay, let's do that a couple of more times. Let's go back to the downloads directory. There's block number two going to go ahead and open that up. Here's all the files that we just extract, extracted. We're going to go ahead and make a copy. Now you can cut them if you want. I'm just choosing to do copy. Come up here to the Joyful Days of Christmas. Hit right click and hit paste. All right, one final time. Back to the downloads directory. Here's block number three. Here's all of the files we just extracted, and I'm just going to copy them over into this new folder that we just created. 
Okay, there we go. We've got block number one, two, and three all in one folder, and we've got all of the file types. Let me go ahead and maximize that folder. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sort this folder, and I'm going to sort the folder on the file type column. Okay, so now all of the files are sorted by file type. Right at the very top, you're going to see that she has given you a PDF file, a picture of all of those blocks. I don't need those PDF files because I am going to index these blocks in my QPI. I'm going to save some paper. I don't need to print that out. I've got QPI. Okay, first things first. Let's come down the list, and here is the three blocks that we need, block one, block two, block three, and these are all my HQF versions. That's the version that I need. I'm going to hit copy. Okay, I'm going to come over onto my C drive. I have a folder called MK Purchased Designs. I'm going to click in that. Here again, you need to divert and think of where you're saving your files. I'm going to come down to my Christy Dillon folder, my creative stitches. I'm going to open that up. Now look at the top of my folder here. I've got some different classifications for Christie's designs. I have blocks, I have borders, sets, different types of things that, that she offers. Well these are three blocks, so I'm going to put them in the block folder. Open up the block folder, hit right, and paste. Right click and paste. Now these three blocks are in a folder along with a whole bunch of other blocks of hers that I have. Not edge to edge designs, not triangles, but blocks, okay? Okay, now comes QPI. You're gonna notice I have my QPI assigned to my taskbar, just gonna open it up. Now the first thing I'm gonna do, obviously I need to go and look at that folder of Christie's so I'm coming into my Patterns folder location, coming down to my Purchase Designs. Here's my folder that's my Purchase Designs. Down to Christy, and here's that block folder. Okay, now those blocks of hers were called Joyful. The first part of their file name was Joyful, so I have to go down to the J's. Let's look for the J's. Here we go. Joyful block number one, joyful block number two, joyful block number three. Now if I click on the first block, you're going to see that there's no keywords. There's no identifying information within QPI. That's because I just put them in here. So I'm going to have to put some keywords on here, put some identifiers on here, so that in the future I can search for them. Well, I don't want to retype all of that information. I've already got some of that information on some of the other blocks that I own from Christy. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to open up one of the blocks that I own from her. And here are some of the keywords that I previously used to identify her designs. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that and I'm just going to stop and let you take a look at the keywords that I use. You might want to use these you might want to use some additional ones. It's up to you. I'm going to hit right click and I'm going to say copy. I'm going to come over here on the joyful block, come down here in the keywords and hit paste. And then enter on my keyboard and it says that those words, those keywords were assigned to this block. Let me do that one more time and then I'm going to show you an alternate method for assigning keywords. Okay, here we go. Here's block number two. I don't have to copy those keywords again. They're already in my clipboard on my computer. So here we go. Right click, hit paste. Those keywords go onto the block. Enter on the keyboard or you can hit that little button right there. And the keywords are now assigned onto this block. All right, let's talk about option number two for assigning these keywords. The other method that you can do is up here in the right hand side, you can click on the select button. You can select one or multiple blocks that you want to assign keywords to. 
for right now, let's just select one. Okay, so we put a little check mark in that little box right there. Now I'm going to right click and I'm going to do manage keywords. And now what I can do from the list of all of the keywords that I have, I can go through and select the keywords that I want assigned to this block. Okay, it's an, it's an awesome alternate way of doing it, but as you can see, you kind of have to go through all of your keywords to find which ones you want to assign to this block. Okay, so either option number one or option number two. I like option number one in this case because I knew that I had keywords assigned to some of these other blocks and I just wanted to use the same keywords. So open up a block that you know has those keywords on it, just highlight the keywords, right click, hit copy, and then go to the block that you want to assign them to. Come down here, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that, just backspace over that, right click and hit paste, and then either enter on your keyboard or that button right there. Now if we look at these three blocks that we just purchased from her, there's block number one with the keywords, here's block number two, the exact same keywords, and block number three, the exact same keywords. Now I'm choosing not to assign the keyword Christmas or holiday because this block to me doesn't necessarily only relate to Christmas. It's just a block. It's one of Christy Dillon's blocks and I think that's as far as I'm gonna go with my keywording. Again, you can decide how many keywords you want for your designs. Okay, if I was ready to use these designs with my simulator, what I might do is hit the select function. I would select that one, and that one, and that one. I would right click, and I would say copy to. I would probably create a folder to work with that. Here is a folder that I previously have. It's called MK Working Quilts. I'm just gonna go into that folder, and then create, make a new folder. Let's just call this one pound sign joyful Dylan designs. Okay, and again, if you've taken any of my instruction, you know that putting the pound sign at the beginning of a name or a folder just moves that folder or that pattern to the top of the list. Let's go ahead and select that folder that we just created, click OK. Now if we transition over to our simulator, and let's do a design open, we should have that folder on the list. There it is, and there are the three blocks that I just transferred over to that folder, and now I can open them up, I can work with them, I can make a whole cloth layout, I can use them on one of my quilts, and in the process, I can thank Christy Dillon and her daughter Becky for being so generous each year with us at the holiday time and giving us a free set. Okay, you guys, that's all I got for you today. Hope that was helpful. Hope that gave you some ideas about file management, storage, and especially how I work with my designs from within the QPI program. There's a lot of other helpful videos over on the QPI website, quiltpatternindexer.com, and there's additional YouTube videos that I've done like this one. Just go ahead and search my channel for QPI. All right, everybody, until next time, from my studio to yours, happy quilting. It's MK. Bye-bye. Sings my heart, sings.